In this session, we will introduce streams as a new data structure. Streams are like lists, but their tail is evaluated only on demand. We will see how this lets you write very elegant solutions to search problems. In the previous sessions, you've seen a number of operations on immutable collections that provide powerful tools for combinatorial search. For instance, if you wanted to find the second prime number between 1000 and 10,000, you could write an expression strictly according to the specification. Go from 1000 to 10,000, filter with the is prime predicate, take the second element. This is much shorter than the recursive alternative, which you see down here, where there's a function second prime, which finds the second prime number in a given interval between from and to, and that in turn calls a more general function nth prime, which takes the nth prime number in again an interval between from and to, and that nth prime has the usual recursive setup to uh, iterate through the interval between from and to. Feasible, but definitely much bulkier and less elegant than this simple expression here. However, the shorter expression also has a serious problem. Its evaluation is very, very inefficient, because what we do here is we construct all the prime numbers between 1000 and 10,000 only ever to take its second elements. Presumably there are many more prime numbers between the 1000 and 10,000. So you could say, well, maybe my bound 10,000 is too high, I should reduce that, but without knowing a priori where the prime numbers are, I would always risk that the bound is too low and I would miss finding the prime number. So we are in the uncomfortable position to be either really bad in, in performance because the bound is too high or risking finding the prime number at all because the bound is too low. However, there's a special trick that can make the short code also efficient. The idea is that we want to avoid computing the tail of a sequence until that tail is needed for the evaluation result. And of course, that might be never. That idea is implemented in a new class, which is called the stream. Streams are similar to lists, but their tail is evaluated only on demand. So here's how you can define streams. They are, can be built from a constant stream.empty, so the empty value in the stream object, and a constructor stream.cons. So to build a stream that consists of the number 1 and 2, you could write stream cons 1, stream cons 2, stream empty. And, of course, streams can also be defined like the other collections by using the stream object as a factory. So you could write simply stream of 1, 2, 3. A third way to produce streams is with the toStream method, which can be applied to any collection to produce a stream. So an example you see here, we have a range 1, 2000 and turn it to a stream with the toStream method. It's interesting to see what the result of that call is. So what we see here is a stream of int, which is written like this. It's a, it's a stream of one and question mark. What that means is that a stream is essentially a, a recursive structure like a list. So we have a one here, but the tail is not yet evaluated. So that's why the uh, interpreter or worksheet has printed a question mark here. The tail will be evaluated if somebody wants to know explicitly. Let's look at stream evaluation in a little bit more detail using ranges as an example. Instead of the usual range and then two stream expression, I've decided that I wanted to work from first principles and I wrote a stream range function directly here. So that's the usual recursive function. If the lower bound is greater or equal to the higher bound, I return the empty stream. Otherwise, it's a cons of the lower bound and a recursive call of stream range with low plus one and high. If you compare that to the function that does the same thing for lists, here's list range, and turns out that the two functions are actually completely isomorphic. Uh, they have exactly the same structure. Only one returns a stream, the other returns a list. And the empty stream here corresponds to the nil case for the lists, and the cons case for the streams co corresponds to the cons operator for the lists. Yet their operational behavior is completely different. If we look at list range first, what would that function do? If we have list range 
of let's say 1 and 10 what would the thing do well it would uh, create a list with a 1 here and so on until I have the 10 here and I have a nil so it would generate the complete list in one go whereas for a stream range what would happen is it would create a first cons pair with a 1 here and then the rest would be a question mark so it wouldn't be generated instead there would be an object that would know how to reconstitute the stream if somebody demands it if I take the tail then of this stream range result then somebody wants to know I would create the second element of the stream and the third element would have a question mark and so on until potentially somebody forces wants to know all the elements in the stream in which case in the end I would have the same structure as for the lists but before I would have partially constructed streams that always end in essentially the question mark which stands for unevaluated stream in most respects streams are actually like lists they in particular streams support almost all the methods of a list so for instance to find the second prime number between 1000 and 10000 the problem we started with we could simply write it this way so instead of writing the range directly we convert the range to a stream then we apply the filter method on a stream and we apply the apply method on a stream with the one as the argument there's only one exception where streams don't follow lists and that's the cons operator so if you write x double colon xs that always produces a list never a stream but there is an alternative operator which is written hash double colon which produces a stream so x hash double colon xs is actually the same as stream dot cons of x and xs and that operator can be used in expressions as you see here but also in patterns so let's look at the implementation of streams it's actually quite close to the implementation of lists so let's start with the base trait uh, there's a trait stream of covariant type parameter a and it extends a sequence of a just like lists do and it has the same fundamental operations as lists namely is empty head and tail and again as for lists all other methods can be defined in terms of these three fundamental ones so if you look at concrete implementations of streams then actually these also follow closely the ones for lists there's one difference however that for streams the canonical implementations are defined as members of the stream object so that's why we write stream dot empty which corresponds to list nil and stream dot cons which corresponds to the double colon class um, the implementations of the empty and cons is actually very close to the ones in lists so cons would have the following implementations of its empty head and tail is empty is false head is the first parameter you pass in tail is the second parameter you pass in for empty it's the same thing as for lists again is empty is true and head and tail would throw exceptions because of course they're not defined for uh, empty strings so the one thing where the cons class and the cons method here differ fundamentally is this here so for the cons method for streams the tail parameter is a by name parameter as you as is shown by the leading arrow here whereas for the list cons class the tail parameter is a normal call by value parameter that's the only difference that matters between streams and lists and that's the only thing that explains this dramatic difference in runtime behavior so because of tail is a call by name parameter it means that when I first construct a console for a stream the tail is not evaluated it will be evaluated the first time somebody dereferences the name tail and that's here so that if somebody calls a tail method the tail parameter will be dereferenced and the rest of the stream will be evaluated that's it the other stream methods are then implemented analogously to the list counterparts so for instance here you see the filter method it does the usual thing if the stream is empty it returns it if uh, the head satisfies the predicate p then 
we do a cons with head and tail filter p and otherwise we do a tail filter p so what in particular happens here is that if i do a filter on a stream whose head satisfies the predicate then i do a computation tail filter p here but that computation is the second the tail parameter of a cons construction so that means that the evaluation of filter down the spine of the stream will be delayed again until somebody wants to find out what the result uh, of the taking the tail of the result stream is so here's a little quiz where you can test whether you understood how streams evaluate I've modified the stream range method by adding a print statement here that prints out the low bound every time sprint a stream range is called. So when you now write stream range of 110 with this method and then take 3 and then 2 list, what would you expect gets printed? Nothing or one of these results here. So let's see how we would reason about it. Um, as you've seen, when we take the stream range of 110, we just evaluate the first element here, and the rest is as yet unknown. Uh, the take method on streams, if we look at its definition and evaluate it, then it would do nothing special. It would essentially, again, uh, return us a stream where we only know the first element. But then, if we finally convert the stream to a list, then, of course, we need to force it, because a list can't be left unevaluated. So by the time we do that, we create a list with three elements one two three and the rest is nil that's the result and to produce that list we have to go down three elements in the orig original argument stream in the stream range so what i expect is that we would print one two three and you can test that yourself by submitting the stream range program and this expression to a worksheet <laughs>